In this exercise, we are given the measurement of conductivity as a function of magnetic field and temperature, and we are asked to say as much as we can about the underlying 2D electronic system. We observe that there is a minimum in conductivity at zero magnetic field, which is characteristic of weak localization. And so we can make this general statement that the system is diffusive and coherent with a coherence length L phi significantly larger than the elastic mean free path Le. With help of this data, we can compute both the coherence length and the elastic mean free path. And if we had access to the raw data, the most precise method would be to fit the data to a model of the weak localization correction which is obtained with quantum field theory methods given by this equation here. So we are not going to do this, but let's discuss this equation shortly. The weak localization correction is given by a prefactor where we have the conductance quantum divided by pi, basically, and we have the log of the ratio of two time scales, which are the coherence time and the elastic scattering time. Coherence time is related to co coherence length by the diffusion constant. And we have the d gamma function appearing. The d gamma function is the derivative of the logarithm of the gamma function. And as an argument, we have one half plus the ratio of two time scales again, one of them being either the uh, phase coherence time or the elastic uh, scattering time. And here we have a time scale which depends on magnetic field and the diffusion constant. So we cannot compute a fit of this model to the data, but we can give meaningful estimates of the coherence time and the elastic scattering time by simpler arguments. So there are two ways of doing this that we will explore in this solution. A first possibility is to use an approximation of this equation here for small magnetic fields, or to use a different uh, expression for the weak localization correction, which is known from the lecture and has been derived on base of more intuitive arguments. So we understand weak localization as being the result of um, the fact that the return probability for a couple of time reversed paths in a diffusive system is enhanced by the quantum contribution to the probability. And <coughs> In, um, in, the, in the lecture, we have derived the result, which shows that this, the decreased, the relative correction to conductivity will be given by a formula with the prefactor one over Fermi wave vector times elastic mean free path times the logarithm of the ratio of the coherence time and the elastic scattering time. And we have also obtained a second result in the lecture where we have considered, so here we consider a single pair of time reversed path. And if we consider all possible such pairs of different areas, and sum their contribution, then we get the full weak localization effect. And if we have a magnetic field, we will have, in addition to this contribution for each pair of reverse time reverse path, we will have a H over 2e periodic modulation of conductivity, which is related to the Salzschuller Aronoff-Spivak effect 
that we have encountered in quantum rings. So this is for a single contribution and for the sum of them, considering the effect of magnetic field, we know the result with the same prefactor. And here we sum over contributions for all possible areas with a weight function or a probability distribution. And we have those h over 2e periodic modulation here. So this probability distribution here, we are basically give a lower cutoff and higher cutoff for the integration. And the lower bound is given by areas of the order of the square of the elastic mean free path, because what has electrons that have traveled a distance smaller than the elastic mean free path cannot be reflected back. And those that have traveled a distance longer than the coherence length will have lost phase information and they provide no quantum contribution to the return probability. So on base of this picture of weak localization here, we can argue that at a scale of magnetic field corresponding to one flux quantum through an area corresponding to the square of the elastic mean free path, so the lower cutoff here, at this magnetic field, even the smallest areas contributing to weak localization will have a significant flux to, through them. And so the contributions will all be averaged out by the Aharnov bomb phase. And so that weak localization is fully averaged out. So here, weak localization is suppressed. Now we can see if we are able to recognize such a field in the data. So we would say that weak localization is suppressed if we basically lose B dependence, if, um, if the curve does not change much anymore as we increase field further. And one could argue that such a field scale is outside the window that we are given here. We have a, quite a significant slope here still, but if we try to somehow extrapolate this, we could argue that that fields of the order of 0 0.2 Tesla, the contribution will, will, will not be significant anymore. And if we pick this field scale as an estimate, 0 0.2 Tesla, and we solve this for the elastic mean free path. Here we get an estimate of 140 nanometers. We can check if this order of magnitude is correct with a completely different argument. Namely, one given by the Drude model of conductivity, which expressed in terms of Fermi wave vector and elastic mean free path takes the following form. And in order to use this argument, we need to know the Fermi wave vector, which is given by the electron density. And this one is provided in the paper from which the data is extracted. The electron density is 2.6 times 10 to the 11 per square centimeter. Now, if you look at the data, so for an estimation of the mean conductivity, we need to look at the lowest curve because they are offset for visibility. And um, here we see that sigma is of the order of seven times the conductance quantum. So Kf times Le is seven. 
knowing the density we know kf and we can solve for le here we get an elastic mean three path of 55 nanometers so there is some discrepancy but we obtain the same order of magnitude and here i would say that the estimate based on through the conductivity is uh, the more precise one so we have estimated the elastic mean three path but we don't have haven't said said anything about the coherence length yet we can look back at this model of weak localization to find how to extract uh, coherence length from the data here. If we look at this formula, we see that this is a Fourier transform of this probability distribution here. And the highest frequencies here will be those corresponding to the upper cutoff, the upper cutoff of this distribution, which is at RES of the order of the square of the coherence length. The highest frequencies here correspond to the sharpest feature in the data. And the sharp feature is this minimum at zero magnetic field. So we understand that the information about the coherence length is essentially contained in the data close to zero field. We could try to argue with the scale of this form here, but um, a more precise approach is to go back to this precise model here. And since we know that the information that we want is in the data close to zero field, we can try to expand this formula for small magnetic fields. And this is possible thanks to a result uh, on the d gamma function, which uh, is the following, so it's a, it's one can uh, work out Taylor series, and one finds that for an argument x much smaller than one or or close to zero, the expression log of x plus d gamma function of one half plus x, one half plus one over x, that this expression here can be approximated by x squared over 24. And I think we can easily recognize that this form of the weak localization correction contains two expressions of this form. We can separate the logarithm by extending it with two tau b and two tau b, and separate this as an expression logarithm of the inverse of this minus the logarithm of the inverse of this. And then we have a log x plus the gamma one half plus one over x minus another expression of this form. And if we approximate both expressions, we have the following result. The approximation for B close to zero of this expression here is It will be a quadratic polynomial in B. And well, if we, if we use this formula and work the details out, we are left with e square over h times two pi third. And then we have a three factor L phi squared over H e 
h over e, so the flux quantum, all of the squared, minus the analog expression with the elastic mean free path. And this multiplies b squared. So then we have obtained an expression for the parabola which approximates the full expression with the comma functions and this is the parabola which describes the dip at zero field. So this allows us to, um, to, to estimate this parameter here, so the prefactor multiplying b squared can be calculated with a finite difference approximation of the curvature here. And in order to, to simplify the task and extract the coherence length directly, one can argue that the square of Le is very, or is even the fourth power of Le is very small compared to the fourth power of L phi square and basically said, ignore this part. Then if we estimate the curvature as I at zero, we have directly the possibility to solve for uh, coherence length. And so this, this curvature, we can approximate it with this um, central difference scheme, for example, which says that the second derivative is given by 1 over a square of the interval, that the discrete interval that we are considering. And then we have this uh, central difference Okay, so this we can measure on the data that is provided. So if we take a few points around zero, um, we can pick, for example, this point at the minimum and the second closest one um, to, to have a, a reasonable approximation. So in this case, delta B is a half of uh, this 10.8 millitesla, and we can estimate the difference between sigma at b plus delta b and sigma at uh, b here, and also for the backward difference. And um, if we plug in the numbers, we obtain a curvature at zero of the order of 2400 uh, times the conductance quantum per square tesla. And as said before, well, we could uh, either use the value for Le that we have before, or we just set this to zero since we have a fourth power. If we solve directly for the uh, coherence length, we obtained the estimate L phi is 375 nanometers. <coughs> so indeed we have a coherence length which is larger than our estimates of the elastic mean free path. And we can uh, we can check those results for consistency if we go back to um, this first estimation that uh, this is this first simple little formula that we have for the weak localization correction. If um, we describe sigma with the true model result 
we obtain an even simpler estimation for the weak localization correction where this is simply so if 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 we replace sigma by the Rudel model form then instead of this formula we are simply left with h over e square times delta sigma given by minus log of this ratio or we can express this with the uh, uh, coherence length and the elastic mean three path then we have the squares and again we can look at our data so we had already estimated this before the the mean uh, mean uh, conductivity is seven conductance quanta but now we are interested in the correction itself so if, if we look here roughly it's it's already order of one and uh, if we plug in um, the the, the values that we have obtained here, we will see that it, the result is also of the order of one. So this consistency check works here. And finally, there is this question of what can we do with temperature dependence? We can make a qualitative statement that the coherence length is reduced as temperature increases. And uh, we see this from the fact that the sharp minimum is broadened uh, at higher temperatures. And we could repeat, for example, this calculation of the, uh, the coherence length for each point in temperature and obtain a scaling law of uh, the uh, coherence length with temperature. But uh, of course such a, a calculation is move, most convenient is if one has the raw data and can uh, simply compute the fit either to the full solution or to the parabolic approximation. <coughs> so in summary, from a measurement of weak localization, we can get the correct estimate for the coherence length and the elastic mean three path by relatively simple um, estimations and arguments.